En unos segundos vas a escuchar una conversación completamente en inglés con mi amigo Vicente, mejor conocido como Vibarco, un artista de reggaetón y música urbana de aquí de Medellín, Colombia, que tiene uno de los niveles de inglés más impresionantes que he escuchado de un latino en mi vida. Suena casi como un nativo de Estados Unidos. Y lo más impresionante es que aprendió todo el inglés desde Colombia. A medida que pasa la conversación, voy a hacer pausas y explicar ciertas expresiones, palabras, verbos, etcétera, para que tú los puedas aprender también. Entonces, lo único que tienes que hacer es sit back, relax, and enjoy, como decimos en inglés. Relájate y disfruta. Si no entiendes muy bien inglés todavía, no te preocupes. Vas a tener la opción de activar subtítulos, tanto en inglés como en español, como tú prefieras. Pero mi recomendación es trata de desafiarte un poco. Inicia sin subtítulos o colocando subtítulos en inglés. Y si hay alguna parte de la conversación, que no entiendes, puedes rebobinar y colocar los subtítulos en español. Si te gusta el video, por favor, ayúdame con un like y suscríbete al canal para que no pierdas videos o clases que saco en el futuro. Pero más importante es porque ese like, esa suscripción, ayuda algo enormemente a que el video tenga más alcance que alcance más latinos que necesitan aprender inglés. Con tu simple like y suscripción, ayudas a mí también hacia mi visión de un Latinoamérica donde no hay una sola persona que no hable inglés fluido y que todo el mundo tiene las mismas oportunidades para crecer en la vida. Yo soy Kale Anders, tu coach de inglés y tu sueco favorito. Empecemos. Vicente, thank you so much. Thank you, brother. For taking your time. I really appreciate it. We have a star here among us. <laughs> I, a lot, man. Thank I, you. I love it. Could you please tell us who you are and what do you do? All right, my name is Vicente Jimenez Gomez del Barco, also known in my work as Vivarco. Um, I do music mainly. I'm a writer, singer. Um, I was born and raised here in Medellin, went to school here, like everything, did everything here, tried to do the corporate thing, job stuff yeah. for a while, didn't like it. I was like, I'm gonna give it a shot with music for three years. I'm gonna give it a shot. To give it a shot es una expresión muy típica en inglés que significa voy a intentarlo. I'm gonna give it a shot. Lo voy a intentar. I'm gonna give it a shot with music for three years. And I said, if I'm not at a certain place where I want to be in three years, then I'll just keep going yeah. on the corporate side. Yeah. And yeah, I kind of kind of did it like halfway through the, the, the effort. Yeah. And... Yeah, that's it. Now I do music. I write songs for other artists. I sing also. Yeah. And have my own music and just enjoy it and do things around that. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. But your English is perfect. Thank you. That what? means a lot coming from you. <laughs> But why? I don't know, man. You know what? I, I, I was an only child. I was an only child. Si tú eres un only child, significa que eres el único hijo de tus papás. Él decía, I was an only child. Yo fui hijo único de mis papás. I was an only child and I spent a lot of my time watching movies. Yeah. And as a child, you never lived in the US or something like that? Well, not at the point where that would have changed something. I was like probably, well, no, maybe it did. Like six, five or six. Uh, when I was five or six, my dad spent eight months there for work. Yeah. And I went to like a daycare there. So yeah. maybe that helped a little bit. Mm. But I, I think it's more imitation. You know, I, if I have something from since like when I was born is is a musician's year. Yeah. And it's always been really good for imitating. Yeah. I learned how to sing, imitating, like listening to radio and trying to replicate what I heard. Yeah. And that's mainly the the, the reason I think because I've been surrounded by friends. I, I ended up graduating from a bilingual school and most of my friends don't have like they have a very thick accent. Yeah. And they had the same training and the same study as I did. Uh but I think that the the ear of imitating somebody Yeah, uh, that's what kind of like helped me eliminate the accent. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, you basically never lived abroad as an uh, as a like a teenager. No, never. I, well, I I lived in Denmark, uh, but that was later. Yeah, I was like I was like twenty twenty one. Yeah, you already spoke fluent English. Yeah, at already. that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you basically learned all your English in Colombia. Uh, yeah, everything was here in Medellin. That's really impressive. Uh, watching movies, actually, I think yeah. imitating the, the the characters and everything. I love I love movies. Uh, they're like really my passion, even even above music. Yeah. Um, so I think that was the main reason. Yeah. Ves como es un tema recurrente que todos los invitados 
Siempre la clave para su aprendizaje es ese interés genuino en consumir contenido en inglés, películas, música, series, videojuegos, todas esas cosas. Entonces, si simplemente tienes ese mismo interés en algún tipo de contenido en inglés, ya has hecho la mitad del trabajo, porque con ese consumo diario vas a aprender muchísimo más de lo que crees, como dice Vicente aquí. Watching movies, actually, I think yeah. imitating the, the, the characters and everything. I love, I love movies. Uh, they're like really my passion, even even above music. Yeah. Um, so I think that was the main. Yeah. Did you have like any challenges when you learned English? Like any difficulties, any frustrations? Well, I don't, you know, the thing is it, it, it's, it's crazy because I never thought of, of learning English. I never thought of learning English. Thought is el pasado del verbo think, pensar. Yo nunca pensé en aprender inglés. O sea, él estaba consumiendo inglés sin pensar en aprender inglés. Estaba consumiendo por interés, por gusto. Y eso creo que es gran clave. I never thought of, of learning English. To me, it was never like, oh, I'm going to learn English. Yeah. It was just so, I think my parents also were like, oh, let's Let's play the movies in English. Yeah. See if she tries to understand it. As yeah. a kid, you don't think you're learning. You're just like trying to understand stuff. Exactly. Um, so I had some some courses and some lessons. And of course, it was tough getting to know the cultural side of it. Yeah. That's been the, the great challenge for me. And it still is because I, I don't want to just like know how to speak English. I also want to know. I also want to know. Escucha como en inglés casual, cotidiano, decimos I also want to en lugar de want to. I don't want to just like know how to speak English. I also want to know like the cultural connotations of it. Like where do you speak certain words or how do people talk? I, I always think about that and it's very curious to me. I, I just very, I love English, man. I love languages and trying to understand how people see it. You have a certain curiosity yeah, yeah, for the language. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. A lot. I a think lot. that's key. Yeah. I think that's really important. I think that's key. Key significa la llave, pero también la clave. Entonces, I think that's key significa, yo creo que eso es clave. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot. I a think lot. that's key. Yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah, I always try to think, a, a teacher once told me, you're never bilingual until you think in that language. Yeah. And I always try to think in English too, and, and also think about how people hear the words from things that I understand in Spanish, like, it, does this word sound, uh, particular to a certain region of the United States, yeah. or does it sound old, does yeah. it sound, uh, you know, like you're trying to be cool. Does it sound old? Does it sound like you're trying to be cool? Suena viejo. Suena como si estuvieras tratando de ser cool. Does it. Es la estructura gramatical que usamos cuando hacemos preguntas. Y usamos does en lugar de do cuando hablamos del sujeto he, she, or it. Aquí él no está preguntando, do I sound old? Do you sound old? Does he sound old? Does she sound old? Sino, does it sound old? Suena viejo. O suena antiguo. No actualizado. Does it sound old? Does yeah. it sound, uh, you know, like you're trying to be cool? Exactly. I always think of that. And, and that's been the hardest part for me to learn. Yeah. That has been the hardest part for me to learn. Eso ha sido la parte más difícil para mí aprender. And, and that's been the hardest part for me to learn. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, recently there was a, an American girl here, we did an interview, and you kissed her on the cheek, which we do yeah. here in Medellin or in, in Latin America in general, and she was yeah. like, oh, didn't expect that. That's weird. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, that's just me, my personality. I'm a hugger. I, I always go for the hug instead of the handshake. I always go for the hug, dice Vicente aquí. Yo siempre voy por el abrazo. I always go for the hug instead of the handshake. That's My opinion is, if you go to a different culture, to a different country with a different culture, You, ad you adapt that culture, you adopt that culture, and you adapt yourself. Yeah. So, don't feel bad about that. Yeah, I, I never do, man. I, I always use it as an icebreaker, you know. I always do that as an icebreaker. Yo siempre hago esto como un rompehielo. Romper el hielo significa lo mismo en inglés. Break the ice. I always do that as an icebreaker, como un rompehielos. No sé si eso se puede decir en español, pero en inglés es tanto un verbo, romper hielo, como un sustantivo, icebreaker. Rompehielos. I always use it as an icebreaker, you know, like, yeah. I know some countries, of course, they're more formal and everything, and I try to read the room. I try to read the room. Me encanta como Vicente es tan fluido y tan bueno en inglés que utiliza muchas expresiones muy típicas de nativos. I try to read the room. Yo trato de leer el cuarto. 
o leer la habitación. Es la traducción literal, pero significa yo trato de leer la gente, yo trato de analizar la gente y adaptar la forma en que hablo basado en mi interpretación del grupo. I try to read the room yeah. before going somewhere, but, but I always try to go for the hug and I'm just like, I, I feel it's, it's a great icebreaker and also like a, uh, an introduction card, you know, yeah. like a, from my personality. I'm yeah. always trying to be friendly with people. Yeah. So I think that's like a great intro. Yeah. And when you were 21, you're 21, 22, you went to Denmark. Yeah. Why didn't you go to Sweden? Bro, I wanted to go to Sweden, you know, and, and being there in Copenhagen. It's right next to it. Like 30 minutes. <laughs> like, it's right next to it. Es justamente al lado. Suecia está justamente al lado de Dinamarca. ¿Por qué no fue a Suecia? El mejor país del mundo. When you were 21, you're 21, 22, you went to Denmark. Yeah. Why didn't you go to Sweden? Bro, I wanted to go to Sweden, you know, and, and being there in Copenhagen. It's right next to it. Like 30 minutes. <laughs> like a three minute drive to Malmo and in Stockholm. Yeah. I, and I, bro, I've always been like, I always liked Scandinavia and the culture and what I read about Scandinavia always like really captured me. And I was in between going to Australia and Copenhagen. I was in between going to Australia and Copenhagen. Yo estaba entre ir a Australia y Copenhagen. I was in between. Expresión muy típica en inglés. I was in between going to Australia and Copenhagen. And I read this article where Scandinavian people are the happiest people in the world. And I'm like, I need to learn how to be happy. Because <laughs> I wasn't happy at that time. I was no. going through a rough, rough patch. I went through a rough patch. Rough significa bruto, áspero, tosco, desigual. Y patch puede significar parte o pieza. Y la explicación rough patch significa una mala racha, un mal tiempo. Yo sufrí por momentos difíciles. I went through a rough patch in my life. Yo sufrí por momentos difíciles en mi vida. Muy avanzado su inglés aquí, me encanta. Y no es impresionante que el único tiempo que ha vivido afuera de Colombia fue como medio año en Copenhague, en Dinamarca, como intercambio en la universidad. No está bien cool que logró ese nivel de inglés desde Colombia. I wasn't happy at that time. I was no? going through a rough, rough patch. Uh, I was, I didn't know what to do with my life. I yeah. kind of like music, but I, I was scared of doing music. Taking the risk. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to give me a job. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it, to, to me, the transition from high school to university was really rough, man. I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it as people usually do. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's go to Copenhagen yeah. and, and see what's up. And, yeah. and I love it, man. It really changed my life, getting to know the people there, the culture. Aquí estoy notando un error de Vicente. Y creo que es el único error que él comete aquí en toda la entrevista. Y es muy típico que ustedes latinos dicen culture o poor en lugar de culture y poor. Es una diferencia muy sutil en pronunciación. Culture. El sonido se produce desde aquí. Oh, oh. Hey, hey. Culture. Poor. En lugar de culture y poor. Culture. Poor. Getting to know the people there, the culture. I, I can't wait to go back. Yeah. I want to spend like a, a period of my life in Scandinavia. Yeah. You should come visit. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Do you think... <clears throat> do you think that is something that you do is that something that you recommend to other latin americans to travel absolutely absolutely and engage in you know interact with different cultures like yeah and anybody you know especially people here in medellin we're really we're very clicky you know okay. like you need to know certain people and we're very close to off i try to kind of break that off yeah i try to break that off or i, I try to break out of that yo trato de liberarme o salir un poquito de esa burbuja que suele haber en tu ciudad natal. I try to kind of break that off. Yeah. Because, uh, bro, Medellín is amazing. Yeah. And you can spend your whole life in Medellín and grow and be happy. But we sometimes kind of fall in thinking it's the only place in the world. Yeah. It becomes like a bubble. Yeah. A bubble, una burbuja. A bubble. Palabra, palabra chistosa. Bubble. It becomes like a bubble. Yeah. And, and it's good. It's good if you want to think that. But, bro... When, once you start traveling and you know what's beautiful about traveling as as a as a paisa the more i travel the more i love medellin yeah i see all the good stuff that you don't find in other places you know? exactly there's amazing things that you see when you travel but but some things are very simple like details like coffee walking weather and you take that for granted if you don't leave medellin exactly 
To take something for granted es una expresión muy típica en inglés que significa dar algo por hecho o darlo por sentado. Entonces él está hablando de que muchas cosas de Medellín, la, el clima, la calidez de las personas, es algo que mucha gente de aquí dan por sentado, dan por hecho y que no vuelven a apreciar de verdad hasta cuando salgan de su país y conocen otras culturas. You take that for granted if you don't leave Medellín. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I absolutely recommend it. Any Danish cultural traits that you've adopted or I like anything, that, anything that you like about the Danish people? Or I love everything about the Danish. The design, for yeah. starters, the people are... We have pretty cool design in Sweden too, by yeah. the way. I mean, no, all Scandinavia, man, it's crazy. The the people and the Scandinavians have... I, I don't know if this is a like Scandinavian thing or just a Denmark thing. They have this saying where it's the, the best, the, like the two best friends a Danish person has is the two first people he met. I think that's beautiful. It's true. They're low they're very loyal people and and they're just like nice and smart. Yeah. Uh and yeah, I love the Hige, you know, the the Hige culture. I, I think it's amazing. The Hige culture in Denmark. La cultura Hige en Dinamarca. Es una cultura que tienen en Dinamarca es que es muy chévere, que es la cultura de igualdad y del bienestar de la gente. Es una cultura muy inclusiva. Es muy fácil hacer amigos en Dinamarca. Si estás considerando mudarte a un país en Europa, por ejemplo, Dinamarca es una gran recomendación. Aunque soy sueco y amo Suecia con todo mi corazón, pero Dinamarca, Copenhague sobre todo, es un lugar espectacular. I love the Hege, you know, the, the Hege culture. I, I think it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I love everything. Yeah. It's true. My, some of my best friends, I know them. I've known them since I was three years old. Yeah. They're still my best friends today. Yeah. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. Okay. I want to continue with the game. Let's I want to play a, a little game with you. Let's go. To to find out some more about you. All right. It's a very simple game. I'm sure you've played it before. What's it called? It's called this or that. This or that. All right. All right. It's very simple. Cats or dogs. Dogs. You have to respond quickly. Yeah. No thinking. All right. Sorry, I just bought a cat, so I felt I was betraying him. Sorry. Estaba diciendo que acaba de comprar un gato, entonces no no podía decir perro. Pero bueno, aquí vamos más rápido. All right. Sorry, I just bought a cat, so I felt I was betraying him. Sorry. All right. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Sports or gym? Sports. Hamburger or pizza? Hamburger. To win. Three Latin Grammys or one international Grammy? Oh, bro. One international Grammy. Yeah? Yeah. Why? I don't know, man. It's just, I think it's a kind of like a reachy thing. No sé si un reachy thing es realmente algo que se dice, pero tiene sentido. Para Vicente, un Grammy internacional es algo por lo cual aspiras muchísimo como artista. Y obviamente pesa más que un Grammy latino, aunque los Grammys latino, como él dice aquí, es también un gran, gran logro. Y en la hora de esta grabación, Vicente ha sido nominado para tres Grammys latinos y un Grammy internacional. Bastante impresionante. Kind of like a reachy thing. I mean, a full respect to the Latin uh, Academy, but I don't know, man. It's just, it's it's harder to yeah. get there. Yeah. So uh, I like challenge. It's a, it's a bigger achievement. Yeah. Okay. To listen, reggaeton or hip hop? Hip hop. To produce reggaeton or any other thing. Reggaeton. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I like it. I love reggaeton too. Yeah, I, love it, <laughs> I, I wouldn't do it as a job if I didn't love it. Yeah. I wouldn't do it as a job if I didn't love it. Esta es una estructura gramatical muy avanzada. El condicional. I wouldn't do it as a job or I wouldn't have it as a job if I didn't love it. No lo tuviera como trabajo si no lo habría amado. I wouldn't do it as a job if I didn't love it. Yeah. I remember the first time I listened to reggaeton. I was gonna, I was gonna go on a, an exchange here in Mexico, uh -huh. 2016. And for some reason in Sweden, I, was studied, uh, I studied at the university and I was living in these dorms. Dorms es una palabra que significa una residencia universitaria. Unos cuartos apartamentos súper chiquitos, muy pegados con los otros apartamentos de otros estudiantes. Barato y muy cerca a las clases. I was living in these dorms and my neighbor was Mexican. Okay. And he actually came from that same university that, is, that I was going to no. in Monterrey, the north of Mexico. Okay. And he was like, he gave me all the tips and advice for my trip there. And he's like, you're going to listen to a lot of reggaeton. And I'm like, oh. and I'm like, what the hell is reggaeton? 
and he put it on on Spotify and I listened to it and I'm like, this is too slow. Like, <laughs> how can people how dance to this? How long ago was that? That was seven years ago. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah, so like 2015. 20, yeah, 2015. Yeah, exactly. All right, all right, cool. It was so slow. It's crazy because yeah. in Medellin, like reggaeton was like popping. Reggaeton was popping. Me encanta como habla Vicente. Tiene una vibra muy chévere cuando habla. Cuando algo es popping, significa que algo está muy de moda, algo está muy popular en ese mismo momento. It's popping. The reggaeton was popping in 2015. El reggaeton estaba muy de moda en 2015 cuando estaba arrancando y ganando fama aquí en Medellín. Reggaeton was like popping from like 2008. Yeah. So it's it had been it had been a while. Yeah. But that's cool, man, because yeah. sometimes, you know, that we have the saying, like, when you don't have the tunka tunka de dembo, um, when you don't have it in songs, Latinos don't know what to do with it. Yeah. You know, they don't, we don't know how to dance to it. Yeah. And it's the other way around with Europeans and Americans. Yeah. Like, when they have the reggaeton, the, the tumpa tumpa, they don't also know what to do with yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's extremely embarrassing. <laughs> the first time I danced with a Latina, I was like, is this for real? And she came up like this with a butt, like dancing like this. I was like... Is this a joke or yeah, is this man. for real? If it it's is for real, real, I'm staying here forever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so exactly. That's the. I think that's one of the success of of reggaeton, man. Yeah. All right. Next question: Latinas or Europeans? Oh man, Latinas. I mean, I, it's not an easy one for me because I love beautiful women from all over the world. Of course, I have a girlfriend. I'm committed, and she's Latina. So, Latinas. but she kind of looks European, though. Kind of looks European, right? <laughs> But I like Latina, uh, the Latina's personality because they're, bro, they're nice. They, they're very supportive and they're kind of spicy, you know. Yeah. They're kind of spicy. Son picantes o picosas las Latinas, no? Por eso le gusta. A mí también. A mí también. They're kind of spicy, you know. Yeah. So I kind of found a good mixture. I love that. Yeah. So then the next question is going to be easy. Predictability or excitement? Oh, bro, you know, I've learned to love uh, predictability as an artist because, bro, I have so much instability in my job and my career yeah. that I've learned how to love predictability. Yeah. That's a really good answer. Yeah. Painful truth or comforting lie? Painful truth all the way. Yeah? Yeah. That's a deep one. Yeah. Tits or ass? <laughs> ass. <laughs> I love it, man. We went from so deep to so shallow. <laughs> I love it. I've planned this out carefully. Yeah, I know. I know what you're doing. And you responded what? As. Yeah? Yes, please. Thank you. Loud or quiet? Quiet. Top or bottom? Top. All right, we'll put uh, Vicente's number down here in the description. <laughs> For your girl. No, no, no. It's, no, no, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. no, no, no he's no, taken. No, no, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Last question. Cale or Duolingo? Cale, bro. Yes, the way. I love it. On the way, bro. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I really you, appreciate man. it. It was a lot of fun, man. Really appreciate it. A lot of people enjoy this. Thank you. Eso. ¿Cómo te fue? ¿Te gustó este video? Cuéntame aquí en los comentarios abajo. Y no es tan impresionante su nivel de inglés que ha desarrollado por su cuenta y el interés en consumir y sobre todo imitar el contenido que está consumiendo para así escucharse a sí mismo también y a consecuencia mejorar su pronunciación. Entonces espero que esta conversación te haya inspirado y motivado para tomar acción y que te des cuenta también que es totalmente posible lograr un inglés fluido, bonito, sin tener que mudarte a Estados Unidos o ir a una escuela bilingüe o ser súper talentoso. No, se trata de un interés genuino y un compromiso y una disciplina de consumir el idioma todos los días. Y si quieres tener una pronunciación así de bonita como tiene Vicente, se trata de imitar y escucharte a ti mismo imitando también para que te des cuenta, para que te vuelvas consciente de cómo suenas. Y así a consecuencia, tu cerebro te ayuda a corregir los grandes errores que tienes en la pronunciación. Me encanta, me encanta. Es un ejemplo perfecto de cómo realmente funciona el aprendizaje de idiomas. Y espero que te haya motivado. Por favor, si te gustó el video, regálame un like. Suscríbete aquí al canal para que no pierdas más videos en el futuro. Pero más que todo, para ayudarme a mí, hacia mi visión de un Latinoamérica donde no hay una sola persona que no hable inglés y que todo el mundo tiene las mismas posibilidades de crecer en la vida. Y por eso te agradezco mucho. Ahora, no olvides que tenemos una prueba de dos semanas de mi curso de inglés. En mi curso enseño a través de historias. Cero reglas gramaticales, cero libros viejos de la escuela aburridos, 100% enfocado en el consumo 
que es la causa del aprendizaje de idiomas, muy parecido a aprender a través de conversaciones. Y ahora, si le das clic en el enlace que he puesto aquí abajo en la descripción, tienes una prueba de dos semanas, lo cual quiere decir que puedes probar el curso por dos semanas enteras y luego tomar tu decisión. Si no te gusta por cualquier motivo, nos mandas un mensaje y te reembolsamos el 100% de tu inversión. Pero si decides seguir adelante, también garantizamos tu fluidez. Y por si acaso llegas al final del curso y no eres fluido en inglés, te devolvemos el doble de lo que pagaste y te damos clases privadas conmigo y limitadas hasta que lo seas. Así de seguro estoy que mi programa de inglés te va a servir. He puesto el enlace para la página de compra aquí en la descripción. Ahí tienes toda la información, garantías, resultados de otros estudiantes, testimonios, precios, planes de pago. Todo está ahí. Revísalo. Y de todas formas, espero que te haya gustado este video. Cuídate muchísimo y nos vemos en los siguientes. Chao.